ever since B.F. Skinner invented the operant chamber. Psychologists have been studying how consequences affect behavior. And through this, trying to understand various different problematic behaviors like overeating or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or drug dependence. The idea is you take an animal, instead of observing the animal in the wild, you take him into a lab in a controlled environment as an applied way to see what gets the animal to respond and what makes them not respond. So imagine that an experimenter wants to assess an animal's motivation for a specific drug of abuse, say heroin or cocaine. And they have a new treatment that is supposed to reduce the cravings for the drugs. One thing they may do is give the animal the medication and then put them in a chamber where they press the lever for the drug. So the animal presses uh, a lever uh, that sticks up in the box to get the reinforcer. And a computer records the exact time at which the lever press is made. And what is usually taken as an index of the motivation of the animal for that reinforcer is the rate at which the animal presses the lever, how fast it presses the lever. You first take a baseline measure and you observe that the animal responds at a certain rate for cocaine. Now you load up the animal with a treatment intended to reduce motivation for cocaine. And now what you see is a reduction in lever pressing for cocaine. Now, the problem with inferring directly from there that the animal is no longer interested in cocaine is that the rate at which the animal responds depend on other things aside from motivation. Maybe one of the things that might have happened is that when you injected this drug to the animal, the animal might have gone, let's say, blind or might not be able to move around as fast as before. And so what you would see is a decrease in response rate, but not because the animal is less motivated for cocaine, but it's only because the animal is physically incapable of producing the response that would lead to cocaine. One of the ways to overcome uh, all these confounds, trying to dissociate them, is by going into details uh, when looking at operant conditioning. So instead of looking just one measure, which is how many times animal responds during a, in a given period of time, we look at uh, the distribution. We look at the time between each response, and we organize them, we rank them in a way that gives us more pattern there are more organization in that than just looking at you know, how many there are. And by looking at this pattern, we can find that there are responses that are very close together, but then every now and then the animal would take a very long break from responding. So sometimes the animal may be pressing the lever at a relatively high rate, and sometimes the animal may be engaged in some other behavior. Which we guess is the animal taking a break and doing something else like scratching or exploring the box and sniffing. This organization of behavior is made evident by the intervals between lever presses. These intervals are known as inter-response times or IRTs and are shown here as horizontal bars. The longer the bar, the longer the time between two lever presses. When a large number of IRTs are recorded and arranged by length, we obtain what is known as a survivor plot. Each point in the survivor plot indicates a proportion of IRTs that are equal or longer to a particular IRT. So all IRTs are equal or longer than the shortest IRT. Only one IRT is equal or longer than the longest IRT. The pattern of interest is more visible when probabilities are arranged in a logarithmic scale. This pattern is often called the broken stick and somewhat resembles a hockey stick. The slope of the steeper line is the rate at which lever presses are emitted within each response bout. In other words, how fast a rat is responding when it's pressing the lever. The slope of the second line is the rate at which bouts are initiated, or how often the rat begins pressing the lever. The intercept of the second line on the y-axis is the proportion of IRTs that separate bouts, which is also the probability that a bout will continue after a response. You may notice that the broken stick pattern is slightly shifted to the right. This is because each lever press takes a small amount of time to complete. This gap reflects the minimum amount of time it takes for a rat to complete a single lever press. Theoretically, the probability distribution would allow the animal to press and then immediately afterwards make another press. But obviously, this doesn't occur in real life. This pattern suggests that the distribution of IRTs is the mixture of two exponential probability distributions. And we call this model the bi-exponential refractory model of operant performance, or BIRM. So if you find that the rat is initiating fewer bouts 
but when they are at the lever, they're pressing the exact same, this is a strong indication that your treatment is changing the motivation for the reinforcer, but not causing some sort of other specific sensory motor impairment. To learn more about BERM, including how to estimate parameters and how to detect effects on parameters, check out the paper and links listed on the screen. Thank you.